The excitement is real here. We have a Ford Performance Gen 1 Cobra Jet Intake Manifold. It's been around for years. It's tried and true. We love this intake manifold. We actually used a ported version of this on our naturally aspirated silver bullet and the brand new Ford Performance Gen 2 Cobra Jet Intake Manifold. We have a 2022 Mustang Mach 1 behind us and an in-house dyno here at our Valdosta facility. Naturally, we have to see what the power differences are. We have our CJ intake elbow as well as our closed lid cold air intake. Let's get this thing rolling and find out how much power these two intake manifolds make. The test everybody's been waiting for, the Cobra Jet Gen 1 versus Gen 2, but we got to kick it off with the stock pull. Scott, tell us how we did on the stock pull. So we have a stock 2018 newer Mustang. Stock put out 377 horsepower, 359 foot-pounds of torque. As you can see, that's the orange graph. It's well below what this stock Mach 1 puts out. And then we did the pull with the Mach 1 in comparison to the 377 and the 21 GT and made 408 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 375 uh, pound-feet of torque. So that's a big increase compared to a GT to a Mach 1, even though this is a 22 Mach 1, which let's face it, they said maybe had about 10 less horsepower or so, right. but it goes to show you how much more power these Mach 1s make with the GT350 manifold, open air filter, um, those are some really good numbers. So that's bone stock, no two, no nothing. Then? So something to keep in mind here, you have the factory GT 2018 plus manifold, then the bullet Mach 1 GT 350 manifold, and ultimately the Gen 1 manifold. What did that make, Scott? So the Gen 1 manifold, we had to knock the dust off this. In fact, Chris donated it for <laughs> us. Uh, made 421 horsepower, 421.87, and uh, 370 foot-pounds of torque. And one of the things we found with the Silver Bullet back in the day is everybody's like, oh, you're giving up all this low-end torque for the high RPM horsepower. Well, I'll be honest, when you have a good tune, a good tuner, and we've been working with John Lund with this today, it really doesn't lose power anywhere, even down low. It's, it's, it's hauling the mail. So as you can see, real nice power numbers down low and uh, it screams all the way to 8,000 RPM. And another thing to keep in mind is, Lund, we did lock the timing with Lund, correct? Between these yes. two. Yes, so one of the things you want to do to eliminate any variables, right, have the same tune for both applications. Um, we had our closed lid on there for the testing as well. But he locked the tune. I think we threw in some octane booster just so we didn't have to worry about the knock sensors or anything like that. And uh, yeah, that's what the results were. And then we threw on the super, super cool looking Gen 2 uh, Cobra Jet. And what did it do? Another horsepower, if that. Uh, <laughs> 422 horsepower and almost identical on the torque side as well at 370. But Scott, what do you think? Well, I think the new intake looks a lot cooler, right? right? It's a little bit more lower profile, fits underneath the stock hood a little bit better. We didn't know what we were gonna get, right? It was out of stock for six plus months. Like I said, you can't deny the looks. The looks of it are fantastic, um, better packaging so to speak. I don't think the plenum volume is as big. Um, some of the casting looks like it may be cleaned up, but you know what? You want one of these Cobra Jets, you're gonna wanna make top end power without really sacrificing anything down low. It's a home run. And then we're looking at the numbers, right? We're trying to dissect it and things like that. And you gotta remember, we've got a stock Mach 1 here. Stock exhaust, stock catalytic converters. It's not gonna be your typical Cobra Jet right. max effort setup. Plus we're using the twin blade throttle body on there for the better drivability. 
Um, it doesn't have the big mono blade on it that I know we ran on the Silver Bullet. Right. But um, all in all, it's uh, basically identical to Gen 1. Looks a lot better, but uh, yeah. That I can't lie. And at the end of the day, I wouldn't necessarily focus on the peak numbers. Obviously, every dyno is different, every car is different based on location, DA, humidity, temperature, all that sort of stuff. This is all SAE numbers, but the differences between each run and the gains you're going to get, that 377 to 408 stock for stock, that's a huge jump between those two manifolds and everything involved stock wise. But then the jump to Gen 1 and Gen 2, the difference, it's negligible, but it looks better. And at the end of the day, you can fit a little bit lower of a hood, uh, get to pick up the Steeda motor mounts as well. Yep, and let's face it, you know, this wasn't just one pull, right? Right. You did three back to back to back pulls, try to keep air intake temp the same, uh, obviously engine, coolant temp, oil temp. So we went three back to back passes, took the best pass, from each situation and, and there you have it. Okay, so we were just talking, right? Three back-to-back -to, -back to bulls. We took the highest one from everything. Right. Literally, I apologize, Lund's just getting back to me. He ran the averages, right? Right. So you always take out the highest, maybe in the lowest, but he says the average, you're looking at 418 with the Gen 2, right. 413 with the Gen 1, and similar with the Torque. So it's five horsepower. So yeah, okay. So we were looking at peak to peak for both of them, but according to our buddy John Lund, when you look at the averages, okay, hey, hats off to Ford. You're looking at about five horsepower and five foot pounds of torque more with this new Gen 2 Cobra Jet. So awesome. Kudos to Ford Performance and the whole team out there. And maybe uh, next go around, we'll test a ported Gen 1 versus a ported Gen 2 and maybe on a car with some higher flowing exhaust. Let us know what you'd like to see. How would you like us to see uh, us test this the next go around? I know, I wanna see that. Hey, we <laughs> love it, right? We've been in here all day long, bending over the fenders, ripping off the manifold, and this is the kind of stuff we like to do. You know, provide you guys with real numbers and uh, real data. So. For sure, let us know what you wanna see. And a huge thanks to John Lund Jr. over at Lund Racing for helping us out with this. He's been setting us up the past couple of days, getting yep. all of his calibrations dialed in, making sure the engine stays safe and it makes constant, consistent power all the way through. So really cool data. Hey, if you like what you saw, like, subscribe, follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. And remember the most important thing, Steeda, where speed matters. matters.